Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Good evening everyone. Two teenage boys have confessed to killing 19-year-old Billy Ray Waters six months after his body was found in bushland near Mowbray. Distraught family members say they've been put through hell and won't feel any sense of closure until the pair is sentenced. In a highly unusual move, the court is allowing the names of the two offenders to be published despite being youths at the time of the murder. From an emotional day in court, 16-year-old Lily Waters bravely opens up after hearing two youths admit to killing her 19-year-old brother, Billy Ray Waters. I really hope that they rot in hell. Nothing can bring back my best friend. The killers, now 18-year-old William Adair Rothwell and 17-year-old Jacob Michael Brennan. The pair pleaded guilty to brutally murdering Mr Waters before dumping his body in bushland near Mowbray in August. The court heard their motive was a minor drug debt, a small amount of cannabis which the pair believed Mr Waters had stolen from them. Seldom are youth offenders allowed to be named, but Justice Robert Pearce made a rare exception. He said due to the heinous nature of the crime and its significant public interest. A directive Mr Waters' grandmother Denise strongly supported. What the these guys done to Bill, whether, I don't care who it is and whom they do it to, their names should not be hidden. Name and shame. Yeah, name and shame. They, they were big men and done the thing, so they should be big men and take the responsibility for what they've done. The defence for one of the accused, Mr Brennan, said his client regretted his involvement dearly and accepts Mr Waters did not need to be harmed. The court also heard Mr Brennan had a terrible upbringing, characterised by a lack of care, neglect and exposure to drugs. The guilty pleas are cold comfort to Lily, who says her trust in society has been broken. I don't feel safe in Launceston living around knowing that my brother got murdered. The offenders will learn their fate next Friday when Justice Pearce hands down his sentence. Grandmother Denise and sister Lily say they've been supporting each other through this most traumatic time. Billy travelled Australia with my late husband and I, as I said in my statement. Um, he was there for me when my husband was in the final stages of cancer. So... Both loved him. All of us loved him. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. A short standoff with police on the northwest coast has ended with a 45-year-old man lighting himself on fire in front of emergency service workers. The scene has been described as very distressing and police are now investigating whether it was influenced by the horrific murder-suicide in Brisbane on Wednesday. Authorities swarm a Somerset address, which hours earlier became a horrific scene as police say a man set himself alight just metres from emergency services workers. So it's a very distressing scene. Uh, it's a very distressing incident. Police rushed to Bell's Parade around 11am this morning after receiving a call from a concerned member of the public. What ensued was a tense standoff with authorities. Specialist negotiators called in as the 45-year-old allegedly barricaded himself in the premises. After 35 minutes, things took a turn for the worst. During the negotiations, the man has exited the building and suffered self-inflicted injuries uh, by setting himself alight in front of emergency service workers and other witnesses. The scene declared a serious incident site. The street closed off for hours as police professional standards were called in to investigate. Support is being offered to the frontline responders who helped the burning man. And when he was removed from the scene, uh, we were advised he had severe burns. The man was rushed to the Northwest Regional Hospital just after midday and tonight he remains in a serious condition. Police say the 45-year-old from the northwest has a history of domestic violence, one factor being investigated whether the incident was influenced by this week's horrific murder-suicide in Brisbane. It appears to be a, a similar type of um, incident, but I don't know whether or not it was copycat, and again, that would form part of the investigation. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. And if you need help or support, there are services available. Contact Lifeline 24 hours a day. WorkSafe Tasmania has banned a prominent environment group from protesting in the state's forests. The authority says recent actions by the Bob Brown Foundation are exposing people to the risk of death or serious injury. If the group doesn't comply, it faces fines of hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
Banners spread across logging machinery as police apprehend protesters off equipment in the Tarkine Forest. This level of action resulting in a notice slapped on the Bob Brown Foundation. This notice uh, prohibits our organisation from forest protests around Tasmania anywhere. WorkSafe Tasmania issuing the notice yesterday, saying the group engaged in conduct exposing people to whom a health and safety duty was owed to an immediate risk of death or serious injury, while prohibiting action undertaken on high-risk construction work, work where there is a risk of falls from one level to another and assuming control of a plant without managing the risks to health and safety. The Bob Brown Foundation is not above the law. It is absolutely critical that all businesses across Tasmania comply with their work health and safety obligations because we want workers across Tasmania to stay safe. The local forestry industry welcoming the move, but opponents say it's draconian. People who love the forests and wild Tasmania will not be intimidated into letting them be flattened by an industry which has absolutely had its way for far too long and a Liberal government which is cheering them on. We support lawful protesting. What we don't support is people going and shutting down uh, rightful businesses and endangering workers. Uh, all businesses have an obligation for workplace safety. Maximum fines for not complying to the notice up to half a million dollars. But the group's founder says the cause will go on. We are going to continue to defend Tasmania's magnificent forests and their wildlife. It would be irresponsible for us to stop protesting. The foundation has two weeks to appeal the ban. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian coroner says it's likely natural causes are to blame for the death of a Nearstar employee at the smelter last year. The coroner's court today heard Michael Petterwood had complained of shortness of breath moments before he collapsed. A report also found he was suffering from coronary vascular disease. There was also evidence, no evidence sorry, of a sulphur dioxide leak. Coroner Olivia McTaggart said the death did not require a public inquest and adjourned the case for findings. A police car has been damaged in an alleged evade incident in the Huon Valley this morning. Police apprehended two vehicles after they were reported to be acting suspiciously in Lonnevale shortly before 9am. The drivers of both offending vehicles were taken into custody after one, a Holden Commodore, ran out of petrol. Nobody was injured during the incident. Investigations are ongoing. Anyone with information is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. A van has erupted in flames in scary scenes in Devonport today. The blaze attracted a small crowd as crews arrived at around 11 o'clock this morning, extinguishing the flames in under half an hour. The Tasmania Fire Service says an estimated $4,000 worth of damage was caused. While a cause hasn't been officially confirmed, the incident wasn't treated as suspicious. A major player in Tasmania's salmon industry has come out swinging against critics in a fiery appearance at a parliamentary inquiry. Hewan Aquaculture says it's been targeted by people peddling mistruths about its environmental impact and it's harming the salmon industry. It's a contentious industry that's divided Tasmanians. But at a parliamentary inquiry, it was Hugh and Aquaculture's turn to fight back. Hitting back at opponents, the tension even boiling over to those running the hearings. We are, no, and I haven't, I haven't claimed that ex there is Excuse untoward. me, I will continue speaking as the chair and then we can continue to engage. In a fiery exchange, the company's boss slammed those who, she says, are creating their own facts about the industry, telling the inquiry her employees have been perceived as criminals through wickedly inaccurate claims, hurting her staff and business. There's a lot of very negative comments and behaviours that are simply inaccurate. <clears throat> you just sit here and you think, that isn't correct, that isn't not what's happening. The head of Tasmania's environmental regulator also questioned over his agency's independence and links to government. The public are showing that they're lacking or starting to lack confidence in the process and in the Environmental Protection Authority. The role of the EPA is to work out how to ensure that those industries can perform in a manner where their environmental impact does not 
cause significant long-term harm. Key witnesses today, two environmental experts who quit a government panel monitoring the sector, citing serious flaws in management. But what they told our parliamentarians, we don't know tonight because their evidence was heard behind closed doors. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. A food fight has erupted over the federal government's support for charities helping the hungry. Labor is accusing the Commonwealth of starving local charities of crucial funds for emergency food relief. Another trailer load of hope arrives in Clarendon Vale. The crates are packed and so is the room. Thankfully no one here will go hungry today. It's a big help for people that are struggling in the community, you know. And um, I've lived lucky here most of my life and yeah, this is a pretty good thing. It helps everyone out and we need a lot more of it, you know. While the food is distributed by the neighbourhood house, it's purchased by an organisation called Loaves and Fishes. Now stalled funding talks between the group and the Commonwealth has placed its southern services in doubt. Around about 70% of the emergency food relief delivered in the southern part of the state is through this one organisation. Loaves and Fishes was given a $35,000 lifeline by the state government last year. What happens when that cash runs out next month isn't known. It's extremely disheartening. And it's for us, it's how then do we replace that program? How do we help our communities? And the reality is that we probably couldn't. The Commonwealth says it's still hoping to resolve the issue. The uncertainty that of, of which we speak is something that's been around for some time. The government's working through the issues with the new contracts and that will be better down in due course. The sooner the better for those struggling to get by. A lot of people depend on this. I know I do. And... Uh, if they take this, we've got nothing. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Around 5,000 people are expected to sample some of the best produce the state has to offer. As the first ever Tasmanian wine festival prepares to get underway, crews are setting up in Hobart's, Hobart's Botanical Gardens for the event. More than 100 different wines will be ready to sample, as well as food and live music. We've got a really uh, unique climate for producing wine and um, we've got a cool long ripening season uh, with wines that um, retain freshness and uh, vibrancy and acidity. The festival will be held in three sessions across the weekend. A Tasmanian family owned vineyard has officially opened a new seven million dollar winery. Riversdale Estate today celebrating its new processing facility which was designed to mirror the French winemaking process. This will allow us to obviously expand our team with the winemaking um, and we've also got some technology and the unique design of the winery allows for gravity and um, a quality control purpose. So we'll be able to actually control everything from the vine to the grape to the wine. It's also hoped that the new technology will help the business become more environmentally friendly with energy able to be recycled for use in different areas of the winery. A fashion parade with a difference is being staged on Hobart's Eastern Shore tonight to help promote the idea that clothing can be affordable and sustainable. It's the third year that the Warain City Mission Op Shop has held the event, which has hoped to inspire the local community to dress up and have some fun. Just seeing everyone have fun and the camaraderie with everyone, just, um, well, just like a little unit here. It's not just a shop, it's like a hub for people in the area to come to. So that's what makes it more special, I think. The fashion show runs until 8.30pm with entry via a gold coin donation. Excitement is building in the days leading up to the Launceston Cup. The Tasmanian Turf Club says a star field is ready to go as Sprayt and hopeful Turak Affair eyes off a $100,000 bonus. Turak Affair has already caught the racing fraternity's attention, first claiming the Hobart Cup and now in line for a $100,000 bonus if she can back up the win in Launceston. But the Michael Trinder trained mare will have extra weight for Wednesday's feature. It did finish off very well in the Hobart Cup. It looked a street in front of the other, the other field, but uh, three kilos, three kilos and it's 2,400 metres, so it's a long way around with carrying an extra three kilo. Some of the big rivals, Glass Warrior, Shady Hustle and Takamochi. If Takamochi is, uh, is fit and well, I think uh, that'll, that'll be up there as well. The only certainty is stunning fashion. The advice, go classy. As far as fashion's on the field, we're definitely looking for just the style and originality for the day. 
And it wouldn't be race day without the fascinating fascinators. The cherry on top of your outfit, so um, making sure that it really complements your outfit and yeah, very original and out there. Not everything has gone to plan. A table booked for a group of Chinese punters had to be cancelled due to the coronavirus travel ban. But the Tasmanian Turf Club is happy with ticket sales so far. A limited number remains available, some of which in the Ledger Lawn Marquee, which was first introduced last year. That's uh, something that we really needed to fill a void and uh, it's a very economic option. The barrier draw takes place tonight. Tasmanian paddlers have navigated through the heats of a major Olympic qualifier in Sydney. Daniel Watkins has progressed to tomorrow's kayak and canoe semi-finals, but he had to rely on his result in a second run to make the cut. Kate Eckhart is also into the K1 and C1 semi-finals, while Demelza Wall snuck into the next round as well. The top-ranked Aussies over the weekend will be in line for Olympic selection. Welcome back. Cloudy and cool about the state today, Hobart, Launceston and Burnie all reached 19 degrees, Devonport 20. Taking a closer look around the state, maximum sat 2 to 7 degrees below average, with Tasmania's high of just 21 degrees recorded at Ooze. Friendly beaches 20, Smithton, Low Head and St Helens all 19, Strawn and the Bass Strait Islands 18, Grove 17, Lyoweenie 11. Today's satellite images show a frontal band moving to the east while low cloud lies over the state. Zooming out, high cloud south of the bite with convective cloud over waters to our west, south and east. Moving along to tomorrow with a high drifting over Tasmania and a second high forming to our east. On the waters, winds west to northwesterly at 10 to 20 knots about the far south, north to northeasterly elsewhere. Swells to 2 metres in the west and south. Around the grounds, mostly sunny in Hobart tomorrow, looking at a top of 23 degrees. Medina, fine and 20, Oatlands 22. Mostly sunny in the north, Launceston 23, Devonport 20, Lyoweenie 18. A top of 20 at Burnie tomorrow, Strawn and Marawar both partly cloudy and 19. St Helens partly cloudy with a top of 22 degrees, Swansea 24, Orford 22. UV very high nines across the state. Taking a quick look ahead to Sunday now, mostly fine about the state. Monday also fine apart from possible evening showers about the Ferno Islands. Tuesday mostly fine until showers develop about the west later in the day. And now further north tomorrow, a sunny day for Adelaide and Melbourne with showers forecast for Perth, Sydney and Brisbane.